What's going on here? Hello there, Seraphim17 once again, introducing you to my Black Ops 2 Veteran Difficulty video walkthrough. This is Mission 7, this is Suffer With Me, and you'll notice it wants you to take an SMG for this level, and there's a lot of running and gunning, so it's definitely a good idea, but I would not pick the MP5, the, the 74U is just better than the MP5 in almost every way, in my opinion. And this is probably a biased opinion because I remember it from the multiplayer of Black Ops, but this is a different MP5 too, it's not the same as, as the one on, on the original. My sidearm is an M16. This section here, I don't know if you can avoid the alarm because I'm never paying enough attention to stop this from happening, but it, it seems to happen every time. Like, I don't know if you can throw this earlier. This guy always got that flare off for me, so... But I do have a good excuse when I, I when I record because I've already played the game. When I'm waiting for the cutscenes, I'm generally dabbling on my laptop because I'm impatient and I hate unskippable cutscenes. You know, we've got to this point. Oh god, dangerous! <laughs> we've got to this point where every cutscene should be Jesus Christ, spammy bastards! Did you see him? He just threw another one. That is. Treyarch, are you remembering things you used to do in previous Pacific-based first-person shooters? But you'll also notice that this is not the M16 I would have customised, as I put a, a burst into Mason's back, uh, mainly because I never use a noob tube, I forgot to change it. Uh, I would have probably ran the grip and extended mags, something like that. But for the most, uh, it, it suits me just fine. The one thing you need to get out of the habit of though is the FAL can automatically fire on this game. Uh, it didn't in the multiplayer so I always use it as a single shotter. The M16 is not a burst weapon so don't, you know, burst the trigger, you don't have to. It will go flat out automatic. You know, just, just these little preconceived muscle memory habits that we've all got. You need to drop them for the campaign because it is, you know, slightly different. Oh, and these things are quite useful too. They're essentially distractions. I have no idea why they're called nightingales, I'm sure somebody will google and let us all know, but uh, when you get onto the balcony coming up, if you throw one of those nightingales, it definitely enables you to get off the balcony without being shot. Uh, be careful here, because the AI pushes me out into cover, and watch this, you're going to see me just get pushed, see me? Oh no, that's me. Is that me? There we go, he's pushing me, there he goes. And as you can see, I can't get back in cover, I could have died, so... It's not quite as egregious as Battlefield 3, but it's still pretty gay when the AI pushes you out into the bullet zone. But one thing I will say about this this campaign, I expected there to be a lot more future in it. Uh, I thought the game was going to start with Hell A falling and Hell A, why the fuck did I call it that? LA, sorry. This is where you want to deploy the Nightingale. I immediately hop off, come over to this piece of wood and start shooting dudes. There's friendlies, the ones on the other side are less than friendly. But I, I thought there'd be much more, you know, cities falling, all America getting all, all messed up, and just on the streets, ground zero, you know, taking down the, the drones and stuff, and, and, and taking on the hostiles. But there's actually only one level of that, and it's the one they showed at E3. So that is probably my only disappointment with the campaign, because it is fun, it is varied, but I think there's too much old world stuff. There's too much of this. And the really funny part of that is my friend Aiden from the podcast, he was really disappointed that there wasn't going to be a lot of, you know, 1980s or old school Cold War stuff, but there's a, there's a lot in this game, and I think the stats that Treyarch said is it was going to be like 20% Old War stuff, and then the rest was going to be future, but I remember playing a lot more in the 80s than, than I thought I was going to. I remember consciously thinking, like, Aiden was kind of pissed that we weren't going to spend a lot of time with the Galil and, you know, with rocking some fantastic moustaches, but it turns out you, you really do. And for this sequence here, if you just kill the few guys around you, run onto the gun, it is the most effective way of stripping that building. If you try and do that with your normal gun, you're going to get flanked like I nearly did, you're also going to get grenades on your position. This looks like I'm playing on easy, but I assure you guys it's not, it's just I died about three or four times on this sequence. And I got pretty efficient at killing dudes, 
so I just bear with it. And not that I think that it's going to stop anybody from doubting the difficulty, because there's always a few assholes on YouTube who, who seem to think that everybody wants to grow their e-penis, when, you know, I'm, I'm quite fine with the size of my normal penis, I don't really need an e-penis. But be careful here, if you shoot those guys running away, they've once turned around, full on turned on me, just murdered me in a bullet, so be very careful. God, the, the 74U is so good. I wonder if you'll get access to these kind of guns in the actual multiplayer. Although, with how much this gun got hated on on Black Ops, I don't think they'll, they'll, they'll do that again. Oh, this is pretty funny too. I stand in the AI's path, so he pushes me out of the way. Watch this. Push, 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 push. <laughs> so, Alright, son, you can have that side of the wall. Goodness me. Be very careful here as well. If you shoot the sieves, it's immediate fail. The amount of times I've failed this checkpoint just because I'm gung-ho is ridiculous. Now, if you don't want to shoot, if for whatever reason you're struggling with that checkpoint, knife the people. They all seem to want to smack you with a baseball bat. I have no idea why. Um, must be hillbillies. Must just like that man-on-man -man action. But a little bit more exposition here before we move forward. The slums are a war zone. As we talk to Noriega, as he stands behind a giant declaration of corruption behind him. I noticed as well when you aim down sights on the 74U, because it goes into soft focus to play on, you know, the depth of field, the slide that chambers the round uh, looks really low res. <laughs> you see it, it looks like a really bad texture. And I probably should have edited this out, so I do apologise, guys. This is time we could be spending doing other things. I just had to stop there for a moment because my phone was interfering with the microphone. I do apologise if you catch any of that, guys, in the recording. You know, it's one of those things that just kind of happens. There's not a lot I can do about it. Uh, I'm not the most avid guy on phones, so my phone doesn't go off half as much as it would if I actually used the thing. And uh, I probably am going to start use get a new one and start using it more because... There's a lot of things they do now that I should probably try and invest in, but I'm just, I'm not a phone guy. I've never been a phone guy. It's just, it's just not who I am. But this sequence here, uh, there's a lot of guys on roofs, there's a lot of guys everywhere. It's one of those where you can get lucky and rush through it just shooting from the hip, but it's probably best to take it slow unless you know what you're doing. Uh, if you're just, you know, chasing checkpoints, you'll probably die a couple times, but you'll get through it much quicker. Like, I go re super gung-ho on these sequences, because I'm one of those type of gamers, when I know a game is not hard, or when I know it's not as hard as it's always been before, I will generally take a lot of liberties. And because I know this campaign is significantly easier than the ones that have preceded it, I play it like a psychopath at times. And, as you'll notice, there's no way I would have survived that on any of the other ones. Even Modern Warfare 3, that guy would have killed me then. But, on this one, you know... You're surprisingly resilient. Like, right now, how the hell am I alive? It's <laughs> it's fun because it allows me to make a more entertaining video, but at the same time, it just it's a testament to how much easier this is. Like, you will not see anybody playing Call of Duty 2 like I am, unless they're really, really good and they spent hours upon hours getting the perfect gameplay, editing it together, where they, they went from checkpoint to checkpoint absolutely bossing the game. But that takes hours, folks. This did not take hours. <laughs> and that is quite the kill zone right there, goodness me. Just funneling towards me. I wish they did that on multiplayer. Gosh, I'm so excited to play multiplayer. You have no idea, folks. And don't get me wrong, I always play campaign first, but I would have played the multiplayer if it wasn't for, for this YouTube thing and making these, these videos. But at the same time, I get every aspect of the game completely devoured when I, when I do it this way. And I'm going to be starting at level 1 with the rest of the level 1s, so I'm not even worried about bumping into a bunch of people with overpowered gear. Because this is Call of Duty. Every gun kills. You know, It's just all about reflex, it's all about knowledge of the maps and, and playing playing the game the way you, you know gives you the most success. And I am going to be playing in combat training when I can't get on. 
for instance, when I'm uploading and my internet's complete dog shit when I'm trying to get this guide up, I am going to be hitting combat training somewhat fierce just so I can learn the maps a little bit, just so I can get the guns in my hands and, you know, get some setups that I like so that when I do start the game on the multiplayer up against humans, I've got a bit of an idea what I'm doing. It doesn't really bother me because I've always got an idea what I'm doing. It's just... This, this, I might as well use a bad situation to give me an opportunity to turn it into a good situation. Because I'm not looking at it as I can't play the multiplayer right now because I have other obligations. I'm looking at it as I'm going to get well versed before I touch the multiplayer and have more fun. But thanks for watching, guys, and you take care now.